Hi, I'm right in the middle of my lane splitter skirt. It's kind of like a regular lane splitter, but here we did Tunisian crochet and worked in rounds. Let me show you the gauge. One of these grey stitches and one of the red ones equal one unit of the pattern. So for 10 centimeters, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, exactly 14 stitches. And for the height, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 rows. So altogether 14 stitches and 12 rows in your gauge. If you want to crochet a skirt with a scope of 76 cm, which means the skirt is 38 cm wide, you'll have roughly a size 38, so a size small or medium. The length is totally adjustable. With this one, I have 37 cm, which is a fairly common length. Most lane splitter skirts, or skirts in general, in this size, come with a length of about 40 cm. For this skirt, I used two balls of yarn in red and two balls of yarn in grey. Both of my woolly hooks sheep. They run 110 meters in length per 50 gram. It consists of 50% wool, 28% cotton, and 22% polyamide. You can see how much is left from my red yarn. Same goes for the gray yarn. Oh, just a second, I dropped that. With these leftovers, you could just add length to your skirt. You could probably even crochet a skirt in a larger size. Here I cast it on 110 stitches. And for the next bigger size, you need to cast on 12 additional stitches. Even then, these together 200 grams of yarn should suffice for the whole skirt. The pattern is designed for the woolly hux sheep. Even the cast on edge. Here we only have two rows of each one stitch in basic pattern and one pearl stitch in Tunisian. After that, I already started with the 7 mile pattern. The other edge is what's still left to do. I'm going to show you how to do that in this video as well. Similar to the stockinette stitch, with Tunisian crochet you have the problem that the edge tends to curl if you're not careful. The woolly hux sheep is a ribbon yarn, so it curls a lot less than a regular wool yarn that is twisted in a round. So it's best if you try it out on a small piece of the pattern to see if you can work the edges like I did here. If not, it always helps to do a couple of rows in rib pattern. This goes for every yarn. For some yarns you might want to rib 4 rows instead of 2, or even 5. And for others, especially with ribbon yarns like this one, just a few rows should suffice, because they don't curl as bad as regular yarn. Here you can see the pattern on the wrong side. Also a very nice pattern if you ask me. And because our skirt has no seam, you can wear it both ways. I haven't mentioned the needle yet. This is a double-ended Tunisian crochet hook in a size 5, which is a USH or a UK6. This right here is a needle from Broom. 
so I use this size, although often I crochet the woolly hug sheep with a size 6 or 7, so a USJ or K, or a UK Ford 2. But I crochet very loosely, so if you like, you can use the bigger sizes. Doesn't matter really, as long as you get the same result as in the gauge I gave you. The pattern for this skirt I chose to do a little tighter, because I don't want it to be see-through. You'd probably wear it with leggings or tights, but nevertheless, I don't want the pattern to be too loose. If you like to use this pattern for a loop scarf, just use a needle one size larger. That way you get an even fluffier pattern. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to cast on, on a smaller piece. Like I said, for this skirt I cast it on 110 stitches, but for this tutorial I'm going to cast on a lot less. Ok, now I'm going to show you the cast on with the chain of 24 stitches. For the whole lane splitter skirt you cast on 110. Two, four, six, seven, ten, thirteen, sixteen, twenty, twenty four. Then you close the round with the slip stitch. But be careful, the chain cannot get twisted. I always insert the hook and then check again if all stitches lie in the right position. Only then, when I'm sure, I pull the yarn through. Then we chain one and this will now be my first loop for my first stitch. Now we twist the chain ever so slightly to the front and then pick up stitches out of these transverse loops on the back, one each. And these stitches stay on the needle. Although this is a little more troublesome to do, in the end it's worth it because the bottom edge will look a lot nicer. Okay. So now it already gets kind of complicated here where it bends. That's why we have to shift all the stitches to the end of our hook and then get the red yarn involved. First, we pull the red one through one grey loop and from then on keep pulling the red yarn through two loops, one red and one grey loop together. And then, when we only have two loops left on our needle, we turn the hook again and start picking up grey stitches again. You can see that I never cast all stitches off completely. That's because they would stretch and the whole thing might lose its shape. That's why I never fully cast off my stitches. 
except at the end when our work is finished, of course. Okay, now I'm at the start of our round again. Now I pick up one stitch here out of the first stitch in our basic pattern. I insert the needle and pull the yarn through. Next, I'm going to purl one stitch. So pull the yarn in front of your work and pull the stitch through. Then again, one stitch in the basic pattern. And then we purl one stitch. Yarn in front of your work, insert your hook and pull through. One stitch in our basic pattern and one purl stitch. Now we again catch up with the red yarn. Doing that, it doesn't matter if I'm in the first row or in the second. You always pull through one red loop and one gray loop at once. Turn around your hook and start again with gray. Because we're doing the rib pattern, we now do a basic stitch and a purl stitch in turns. Basic, purl, basic, purl, basic, purl. And like that, you work all the way around. The rib pattern will prevent the edge to roll itself up. Turn around again and get the red yarn. And again, continue with the rib. Basic stitch, purl stitch, basic, purl. Okay, now our first round in rib pattern is finished. We'll do another one. Always crocheting one stitch basic pattern and one purl stitch in turns. Until we have two full rows in our rib pattern. After that, we get started with the seven mile pattern. Again, basic stitch and purl stitch in turns. And we end with a purl stitch. Catch up with the red yarn. Okay, now we continue with the 7 mile pattern. For that, I start with a yarn over. Then insert in the two following stitches and pull the yarn through both of these loops. Yarn over, 
insert into two stitches and pull through. We keep doing that and repeat until the end of the round. Then we turn our work again and crochet the red yarn. Always pull through one red and one grey loop together. And it doesn't matter if that grey loop is a yarn over or a regular stitch, just get one red loop and one grey loop together. And we keep going with grey. Yarn over, two together, yarn over, two together, yarn over, two together. Alright, now at the beginning of the round. Here I have the first yarn over. Now we yarn over again, insert into that previous yarn over and into the following stitch and pull the yarn through both stitches. Again, yarn over, insert into the previous yarn over and into the following stitch and pull the yarn through both of them. Again, catch up with red. Then we continue again with a yarn over, two together, yarn over, two together. And so on. Alright, and that way you keep on working round after round until you reach the bonnet length for your skirt. That's why you need an even number of stitches, so that when you have a lot of stitches and an even number of stitches, you can continue round after round in your pattern. We have no transition in between rounds. And you can see that the pattern already starts to twist slightly. Not the rib pattern from the beginning, but the 7 mile pattern already bevels. And from that bevel, the pattern gets this unique structure. Now you continue like this until we reach a point where we want to cast off. Ok, now we want to cast off the skirt, beginning at the start of the round. For that, we check where the first round started and trace it all the way back up to find the corresponding stitch. That'd be right here. I then catch up with the red yarn all the way except for one stitch. Then cut off the red yarn and pull it through the last red loop.
Now we only have the gray yarn left. And I'm going to switch to a slightly shorter hook. Just for this tutorial though, because the longer one keeps making noise on my desk. You just keep your hook. Now I crochet one stitch in our basic pattern, so one slip stitch. I insert into this yarn over, just like for our basic pattern, and then cast the stitch off. I purl the following stitch, and then pull it through the loop in a needle. Then again, basic pattern, and purl one. Basic, purl, basic, purl, basic, purl. That way you work all around the skirt until you reach the start again. Now I'm coming near the end of the cast off round. To create a nicer transition here, I now insert here into this yarn over and do a slip stitch. You see, that looks nice and even. Now I'm going to crochet along this edge by doing slip stitches. I do that by inserting underneath the stitches and then pulling the yarn through. Just insert into each stitch and pull the yarn through. One whole round of slip stitches. That way you get a nice and tight edge that doesn't curl. Once you've finished this row, your lane splitter skirt is finished. I hope you had fun with this tutorial. If so, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. I frequently upload new ideas and designs. Hope to see you soon. Love, Veronica.